Leviathan and Warhammer 10th edition are here. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different for this video because my big ambition for 10th edition is to actually have an army available to play with if I wanted. Now, I spent a lot of time painting for the channel, painting for commissions, but not a lot of time for myself. So I'm going to need to come up with a scheme that's pretty quick, that's interesting, looks great, and doesn't take me too long to do. So what better model to start with than the Space Marine Terminator Captain? So I'm just going to clip him out to the frame, clean up any mold lines. Now, one thing with this Terminator Captain, I'm going to make sure that I leave the back off. Now, I've cut the peg down. I'm just using a little bit of blue tack in there to hold it all together while I get the model ready for painting, because that's going to make it much easier to paint the cloak uh, later on. Now, in terms of what chapter I'm thinking, the decals that come with the set are fantastic. I really, really like the decals that you get with a set. Really nice variety and also a nice variety of chapters. There's not all ultramarines in this set, which is a nice change from Gideon's Workshop. That being said, if I go for one of the founding chapters, then it's probably going to take me a bit longer to paint than I perhaps anticipate uh, and have enough time for. So the idea I've had, and now a couple of years ago, a supporter of the channel sent me some Silver Templar decals. Now, if you're not familiar with the Silver Templars, they were created for um, one of the magazine campaigns that, that Hatchet Parkworks did, it, it, possibly Indomitus, I'm not sure what it was called, but some great decals in here. And painting silver marines should be pretty straightforward. Yellow, one of my favourite colours, so that ticks another box. So let's get into this and see uh, see how it turns out. The first thing, I want to make this model fairly agnostic in terms of the terrain and its basing. So I've not bothered with the Screamer Killer Head. I've just popped out to the back garden. Don't tell Mrs. Painting Coach. And I've stolen some of the slate that we've got in one of our borders. I've just glued this down with some super glue. And then any gaps I've just filled in with a little bit of sand. So that's where we're going for. Let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prime this with my airbrush. Uh, I'm using Baleo Black Polyurethane Primer. So uh, I'm going to use the airbrush a lot in this video. Like I said, this is not a tutorial. This is just kind of a walkthrough. So you can kind of uh, get a little bit of understanding about how my brain works and how I might attack certain tasks. Now, obviously, I have some sub-assembly, so I've got the arm separate and I've kept the shoulder pads separate. I'm not priming the shoulder pads just yet. Uh, I'll do that later on. Now, the first uh, silver colour I'm going to use is all from Vallejo Metal Colour for this airbrushing stage. And the first one I'm using is going to be Exhaust Manifold, which is a dark silver. It's got a hint of brown in it as well. And this is basically going to be the shadow colour. So I'm getting this over the model, making sure that I'm using short bursts with the airbrush because Whilst the metal colour goes through really nicely, if you're a little bit too exuberant, it can smudge, you can get some spider legs, so we don't want that at all. So we're just going to cover all of the model with this exhaust manifold, and all, all the parts of them want to be silver. Next up, we need to do a brighter silver from above. So the colour I'm going to use for that is Dura Aluminium, which is a nice bright silver, again a uh, metal colour. And we're just using this from about 45 degrees. So it leaves that exhaust manifold in the recesses. And that means if we do spill any of the colors we're going to use, we can easily go in uh, and fix it up. It's not too difficult at all. So straight away, you can see the shine on this model is fantastic. I want to protect it. So I'm going to use some of the metal varnish that Vallejo uh, do as well. Again, through the airbrush, just over the top. I'm going to let this dry fully uh, for a good hour before we crack on with the next stage. Next up, I want to get the cloak done. So what I've done is taken some masking putty and I've just worked this around the cloak to make sure that I don't overspray onto those silver areas. And this is a very straightforward and easy thing to do. And this is why it's really handy is that you can take the cloak off as well because it'll make it really easy. So I'm going to cover both sides of it with a dark blue color. Uh, I think it's called blue black. And this is from Pro Procrail. So just take my time building up a nice solid layer with this. So in my head, I wanted the cloak to be a nice rich burgundy on the back and a nice bright white to contrast it on the front. So I'm using Pro Acryl Burgundy on the back of the cloak. I'm leaving that uh, blue black in the recesses as much as I possibly can and just working my way around this, being very careful not to spray it on the front because really the front of the cloak is not matte. I'm then going to take some plum. Again, this is from Pro Acryl. It's a bit pinky uh, and I'm going to aim this from above so I'm shooting down the cloak onto those most raised folds and this is going to give me that uh, really nice transition on the, on the cloak itself. With the back of the cloak finished it's time to highlight uh, the front of the cloak 
Uh, and the color I'm using for this is a light blue gray. Again, this is all pro acryl. And the reason I'm using pro acryl is they cover really nicely. Uh, but the main reason is that they're in drop of bottles. They just drop into the airbrush really nicely rather than having to thin down uh, some of the Citadel paint. So in this instant, this is why I'm using it. And you can see it's a nice uh, bright bluey gray color. I guess it's just a very vibrant version of Fenrisian gray. Um, and this, this looks really nice for, uh, for when we're doing uh, the white highlight. To finish up the inside of the cloak, we use a little bit of bold titanium white, again from Procol, and we're just focusing on the most exposed areas. You can see one of the big pitfalls of using white paint as I'm working on this. And if you press air towards the model and you've got anything dry on the tip of your airbrush, it's gonna spit it over your model. So just done it again. So it's really important that when you're using white paint or your airbrush in particular, spray off the model and then move it on the model to start the actual painting. All right, it's time for the yellow. Now, I'm going to prime this with a bright pink color, and the bright pink color I'm using is gonna be a Molotov One For All pink. And essentially, I'm just gonna airbrush this all over the yellow part. So for things like the chest eagle, I've masked those areas off. Uh, for the shoulder pad, it doesn't matter because I've left them off the model. And again, I've masked it all off uh, using masking putty. One thing to be mindful of here is that I want to mask the whole area that's going to be a different colour to the silver. Uh, and the reason for that is very simple. Uh, it's that if I put the paint on, but then I've got that covering over the area that's going to be black, but not all of it, then the problem I'm going to have is that it will leave different layers in the paint and it might be a little bit lumpy later on. So that's why I'm making sure to leave the whole area uh, unmasked. Next up, we'll take some white ink. Now I'm using Liquitex white ink. And this is fantastic to an airbrush for getting a zenithal for, for a white color, whatever you need really. Just make sure that you've got the pressure right. Now I'm using sort of like a middling pressure, uh, not too high, not too low. And what I'm doing with this is uh, focusing on the areas that are gonna catch the most light with also being mindful to the shape of them all. So for the shoulder pads, for example, uh, it's the top of the shoulder pads that are gonna catch the most light. So we're just gonna gently add that gradient in because that's what's gonna make it a uh, really nice effective uh, yellow that's going to look really nice and rich later on. The yellow I'm using is Imperial Fist Contrast Yellow. Now it's a fantastic color anyway, uh, but through an airbrush over a pink and white base, it really does look fantastic. Uh, so again, not putting this through at massive pressure, just making sure that it goes on and covers the model really nicely. I'm really happy with how this yellow is turning out. It looks fantastic. and It's going to contrast that silver armor fantastically well. That's enough for the airbrush for a while, so let's go in and start to block in some of the colors. The first one I'm gonna block in is all the black. Now, obviously we've got the ribbing between the armored joints, but we've also got that chest piece uh, on the silver templars, which is black. So it's just really important to be careful around the yellow you've already finished, uh, not to go too wild. Just take your time uh, in adding this black on. Once we've got all that colored in and blocked in, I wanna go and do the gold next. So we're just gonna base all of this uh, with Retrovive Drama, and this is my normal uh, straightforward easy gold recipe. Once that's completely based with Retributor armor, we're then going to wash it with some Reutland Flesh Shade just to give it a nice warm color and that'll help it contrast against the cold silver of the armor as well. And when that Reutland Flesh Shade is completely dry, we're going to go in with some Liberator Gold and just highlight the sharpest edges. Again, like I do in all my videos, making sure we catch those raised edges, not too much paint on the brush. Next up, we'll highlight all of the black on the model. And the color I'm going to use to start with is German Grey, which is a very dark grey. And we're just going to add this kind of like an edge highlight, but we're also going to focus it on those areas that are going to catch the most light. And then once we've done that with the German Grey, we're going to go in with a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey. Not too much on our brush, uh, but we just want to catch this on the most prominent areas. That's going to give us a really nice transition between the black to the lighter grey. But like I said, with the Mechanica, it's usually not too much. Whilst we've got the Mechanicus Grey out, I'm going to do the Crux Terminatus on the shoulder pad. So I'm going to base it with Mechanicus Grey to start with. And this is, again, one of those areas you get to that you just need to be really careful because that yellow is done, it's finished. We're not going to go back over it, so just take your time when you get to the edges of that Crux. And then once that's dry, we'll wash it with some Null Oil just to darken it down. And then we can brighten it up a little bit. So the first highlight we're going to do is with Dawnstone, which is only slightly lighter than Mechanicus Grey, but because the Mechanicus Grey has been darkened with the null and oil, it's really easy to get this nice uh, transition layer. Once that's finished, you've painted those highlights, 
we're going to do some administratum grey as the final highlight um, and that's really going to help it again stand out against the shoulder pad uh, but also look a little bit stone-like which is what those crux uh, terminata should look like in my mind if, if you want to do it metallic then, then do the metallic but for me I think they're supposed to be quite stone-like Now, the Terminator Captain has also got a Crux Terminators on his right greave on his leg. Now, if I painted that in a stone colour, it would blend right in with the armour. So, I was trying to figure out a way that I could help it stand out. So, the first option I was thinking about maybe doing it like an obsidian black colour. Uh, but I opted against that and I went for a bright white colour instead. So, really straightforward. We're just going to cover it with Korax white paint to start with. Take our time, obviously, around the armour because that's already finished. We'll then wash that with some apothecary white contrast paint, again, just to keep the colour temperature a bit colder um, so it fits in quite nicely with the rest of the scheme. And once our apothecary white's completely dry, we're going to take a little bit of uh, bold titanium white from Procryl and we're going to paint this over the edges as a highlight. We'll also put this on the gem here and on the gem uh, that's on the shoulder pad cracks as well. For the purity seals, I again want to try something a little bit different to what I would normally do rather than the rack our flesh and the wash and the weighting and things like that. So I'm going to base all of the purity seals using Bane Blade Brown, which is a nice neutral brown colour. Um, now, this should cover okay, but in some areas you will need to put a second coat on. So when we need to do it, I'll do it. But otherwise, I'm just going to carry on and paint all of this with Bane Blade Brown. And then when that's dry, we'll come around and we'll start to highlight it. And the colour we're going to use to highlight it is Carrick Stone which is a really nice, um, I'm not really sure, it, it is a brownie colour, but it's a bony brown colour. I really like character stone, but we're just going to use this to highlight all of those parchment slips. Uh, we're going to do it in a horizontal manner as well, so it just adds to the aged look of the paper. The final highlight, which we'll focus on the edges and the most raised creases, is going to be with a little bit of pallid witch flesh, which is a really bright colour, but as it dries, it will blend down slightly. So just thin it a little bit with your paint. Make sure you take the moisture out of your brush by dabbing it on a paper towel. And then we're just going to work it across, again, those areas that are catching the most light. And that's going to give us a really nice looking parchment. One of the big challenges with a all or with an all silver scheme is going to be the differentiation between mechanical working silver parts and the bright shiny silver of the armour. So the way I've resolved to finish this on this particular model and, and on all my silver templars going forward will be to use some Agrax Earth Shade over any mechanical parts. So things like the weapon case, uh, sorry, the uh, ammo feed, the ammo clips uh, and obviously the mechanical parts of the weapon, I'm going to use the Agrax Earth Shade and similarly those power tubes that go from the arms into the backpack. Uh, we're going to paint them with Agrax Earth Shade as well just to differentiate them and just dirty them up to give the impression perhaps they're more uh, mechanic in nature than the rest of the armour. For all the purity seals we're going to base them using Scream of Pink uh, and this is a real simple uh, technique. Remember the whole point of this is making sure I can paint this quite quickly so I can get a decent art looking army on the tabletop and once that Scream of Pink is down we're going to highlight that with some Emperor's Children uh, which is a nice bright colour, uh, but it'll stand out quite nicely against the screen of pink. And again, once it dries, it will blend down a little bit. If that's too bright for you, you could use pink horror. Uh, but again, we're using colours that contrast nicely with the armour and with the shoulder pads. Originally, I was anticipating using something like an oil wash or an enamel wash uh, on the silver armour, just to, again, for the sake of speed. But... I had a little bit of a hunch because I've got that gloss varnish down over it. There's virtually zero surface tension on the armour. So what it is, I just cracked out the null oil. And actually, this works perfectly well. Because there's no surface tension, the lower pigmentation of the newer version of null oil, which has got more of a contrast formulation, and it works really well. And just brush it over all of the silver armour. It just runs off the surface straight into those recesses. Um, so that actually makes this process A, quick to paint, but B, quick to dry as well which is really important because obviously with an oil wash or an enamel wash you're going to be waiting a little bit uh, and you're probably going to have to put a coat over it as well to protect it uh, going forward so actually this is a really nice solution I'm really actually a bit of a happy accident I suppose but I'm, I'm glad I did discover it because uh, this will save a lot of time for painting the face again I went for something a little different to the normal citadel so uh, I used my Pro Acryl paint, so we started off with Shadow Flesh, and this was just as straightforward enough as painting the entirety of, uh, of the flesh, but making sure that we've got a, 
a good decent thin layer rather than one thick one. From there on, it was really a simple case of highlighting up through the colors, catching the most raised areas, like I would paint any face on any video. Uh, and that was to start off with Tan Flesh, which is a nice neutral skin tone color that Pro Krill do, uh, and then finish up with a highlight of Warm Flesh. Now, if the transitions are too stark, you can always go back with a mix of the two colors in between, um, but just take your time and enjoy this stage because the face will be a focal point of the model, particularly on the Terminator Captain, because he hasn't got a helmet on. Now, on reflection, I really wasn't happy with the cloak. Now, I have put gloss varnish on it because I was going to use some of those silver Templar de decals to make a really nice, ornate looking cloak, but I wasn't happy. It was a bit too pink for my liking. So I just took some Screamer Pink and painted straight over the uh, the cloak, obviously being careful not to get any on the white on the other side. Uh, once that Screamer Pink was dry, I then mixed a little bit of black into it. Now, this was a tone very similar to Galvo Black Red. And I use this to paint into the recesses and I'm using a fairly wet paint here so that it will, when it dries, it will blend in nicely. But also I can go back to screen pink, a wet blended if I needed to. Um, this is going fairly quickly. So, I, you know, I'm not wasting time here. I'm, I'm working fairly quickly and it's going on quite nicely. Similarly, when it came to highlighting, I mixed some pink horror and screen pink together. And I focused this on the nice wide open folds that. Uh, we've got on the cloak and finally I took some pink horror on its own just to go for those uh, nice extreme highlights on uh, the sharpest folds on there and you can see I'm much happier with this tone of burgundy cloak than I was with the first one. So it's time for decals next. I haven't really planned this out as well as I perhaps should have. Um, so the captain has got two tilt shields one which i'm assuming is going to be chapter heraldry the other being his personal heraldry um so what i've decided to do is on the right tilt shield is i'm just gonna put a silver templar icon and um, a white imperial eagle now for the shoulder pad itself um the decal is slightly too big and i'm being very ham-fisted with how i'm applying this but i got it there uh, in the end and then once it's all dry and matted down i can tidy it up with a little bit of paint anyway so I'm not too concerned with how badly I'm applying this uh, at the moment. Uh, one thing as well with the decals, just make sure that you are putting them down over a gloss surface because uh, this will help to reduce any silvering, which is where you can see the edge of the decal um, and you can tell that it's a transfer. So I used the Navaris scroll decal on the back of the cloak. And what's really important, if you're going to put a decal on the back of a cloak, uh, make sure it's curved. Uh, because it'll contour to the folds a lot easier. If this was a flat decal, it wouldn't work. You can also see I've popped a black silver Templar icon on there as well, which you can't really see very well, but the whole point is I'm going to paint this white. Now, there are no white Templar decals on the transfer sheet. You can buy them online, uh, but I'm just going to paint this uh, using shades of grey, so I'm starting off with Mechanica Standard Grey. Once that's dry, I'll paint the raised areas, with administratum gray leaving that darker color in the recesses i'll add some corax white to the brightest areas and then finally i'll take some bold titanium white from pro Grill, uh, and i'll just pop this into the um along those folds those sharp folds and this will give me a nice white temporary gun uh, that goes really nicely with the cloak and i really like how this has turned out The white Novaris scroll work is a little too bright and doesn't really look like it's part of the model at this point. So what I am going to do is take a little bit of Bane Blade Brown and I'm going to paint this into the recesses, but I'm going to make sure it's a glaze consistency. So there's hardly any paint on the brush. It's very, very thin. We're just going to work this into the shadow areas of the scroll just to help it stand out a little bit more. And of course, I put another coat of gloss varnish over everything. And then I'm using a vat, uh, uh, sorry, a matte varnish as well. The last thing we are going to do before we pull it all together is have a little look at the sword. Now, I want to do a nice uh, blue glow on the sword. Now, obviously, it's got writing etched in there, which I think says uh, Tyranids Mortis or Die Tyranids. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is take some frost out of my airbrush and I'm going to airbrush this along that area, taking care not to get too much of it on the gold hilt uh, and just focusing it around those words. I'm then going to add a little bit of um, white paint into that frost heart, and then I'm going to focus this 
uh, on the power nodes and around those areas just to give me a nice brighter color when that's completely dry i'm going to thin down some white oils paint with some white spirit now you could potentially use ink for this uh, but you just have to be a little bit more careful with the oil paint um, you can just dip it in the capillary action will just pull it into those letters and you can afford to be a little bit messy with it so if you do get it on the sword itself what we we'll do is just leave it for sort of five to ten minutes dry and then i'm going to take a makeup sponge and wipe that off uh, it'll take some of the oil out of the um the lettering as well but that's okay all we're going to do is then take it in which can use the hair dryer over it make sure it's not too hot but that'll just speed up the drying of that oil i'm then going to airbrush frost heart over all of that white again and that's going to start to build up the different sort of luminosity and the layers on this when that's drying i go back to that white oil paint i'm using the same mix i was using previously and I'm going to paint this over that area completely again so it's going to get into all of those recesses uh, I'm then going to go back to the hairdryer to dry it off a little bit because that's important for the final step which is to paint frost heart directly over that white oil paint now of course if you're using uh, just normal white acrylic paint this will be a lot quicker uh, in terms of the drying time now like I said, I've used the hairdryer to speed it up but normally you'd probably have to wait a while unless you were using quick drying oil paint uh, and then once I've popped this frost heart back down over the white, I'm going to wipe most of it away. You can either use your brush or you can use um, a makeup sponge as well. And that will help to give you that glow really nice and easily. So there we have it. First Captain Ducasse of the Silver Templars is done. And that's apparently who the first captain is on the uh, Silver Templar force organization charts from some of their lore so i'm really 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 happy with how this has turned out in terms of the speed i probably took a little bit longer on him because of the additional details such as the cloak and the decals but when it comes to doing a whole army i'm really quietly optimistic that i can get something on the tabletop at least before 11th edition so i really hope you enjoyed this video something slightly different to what i've done in the past it's not a tutorial it's just more of a walkthrough on my thought process while i'm producing a miniature and i'm really happy with the result i hope you like it too please make sure to like and comment on the video and if you like the channel subscribe i'm trying to get to 100,000 subs by the end of 2023 otherwise check out all of my other content there's plenty of step-by-step -step tutorials in both long and short form i really appreciate your support thanks for watching i'm gonna see you next time